Okay, so super important video today about small mistakes that you might be making on your book that are having a large impact on the amount of sales that you're making. And these are the type of mistakes that people make that they don't realize that they're making, but it could be the difference between you making sales and not making any sales with your book. So these mistakes that people make these are the type of mistakes that will turn your customer away from your product almost instantly. Like as soon as they click on your product, it's going to turn them off straight away and you're not going to make the sale from that person. So in this video today, we're going to take a look at what these most common mistakes are and quick ways that we can fix them. Okay, so before we get into that, I just wanted to share some results from my Amazon ads to anyone that's interested. So if you're not interested, just feel free to skip through this part of the video because this is not a tutorial. This is just for people that are interested in following the same sort of route that I've taken with publishing, which is to start off with a really low amount of money, um, gain some sales, gain some money, and then start spending that and then start putting that money back into ads. And then of course, hopefully making more money from those ads. So this is something that I probably should have started and pushed a bit heavier around a year ago. Um, but I've only just recently started to get into this and start researching it and start actually spending money on ads. So if you come across to my advertising dashboard here for the dot com store, what we can see is that I've spent uh, this month, I spent nearly $20 and we're seeing around nearly $100 of sales here. And the ACOS here is 21%, which means uh, for the most part, I am making profit on these ads. So if we scroll through here, we can just take a quick look at some of the um, campaigns that I've set up here. So as you can see, I've actually set up loads of campaigns um, even like two years ago, I started making campaigns and I think what I found then since I was absolutely clueless as to what to do with these, as you can see, I've not had any clicks, not had any spend on any of these campaigns. So obviously I turned them off and just focused on producing books on Amazon instead of not worrying too much about ads. So recently I've come back, if I can just show you here, um, to an ad campaign that I started in 2020 and I actually started to I uh, re-enabled this campaign and started working on it in the last couple months. So what we can see here this month on this campaign is I've spent $12 and had four sales and brought in around $60 worth of sales with an ACOS of 21%. So that means we're in profit for this ad here. And this ad I've just set up four days ago, I think at the time of recording this, this was set up four days ago and I've spent $4.95, we've had three sales with nearly $30 of sales in return and an ACOS of 17%. And this one here, it's had no sales whatsoever. We spent around $1.34 and of course we've not made any sales on this one. So currently at a loss, but again, it's only been up for a few days. So we need to monitor that and see how it goes. And this one here, which is actually a word search, I believe. Yes, it is. And we've spent one dollar and we've had one sale um, for a six dollar worth of sales and an a cost of 16 percent here okay so that's just a quick look at how ads are going for me so far on amazon kdp if you're interested in following me on this journey where i'm going to be uploading more videos about ads and ad spend then feel free to subscribe if you haven't already because i do believe that spending ads is going to be the way forward eventually and i think while you definitely can make good money from not spending ads, I think the next step that most people will want to look at when they're making decent money from KDP is to start reinvesting that back into ads and making even more money. Okay, so let's get into the main part of this video now and what small mistakes could you be making with your books that are having a big impact on your sale? So as I said at the start of this video, these could be mistakes that you're not even sure that you're actually making and they are mistakes that you kind of overlook you'll go into this sort of seller's mode and you'll ignore these really fine details that you shouldn't be ignoring that your buyers aren't ignoring these are the first things that your buyers are seeing and it's ultimately going to either convert them into people that buy from you or they're just going to run a mile from your listing okay so these mistakes they go beyond what i've spoken about in other videos before so things like picking the wrong niche like this is more basic than that, but it is just as important, I can assure you. So let's get straight into it. So the first small mistake that you could be making is spelling errors. So I've been guilty for this myself with some of my listings where I've not actually checked through them and seen if the, all the um, spellings are correct on the listing and on the cover. 
And this happens way more frequently than you would imagine. And if you have spelling errors, especially in the title of your book and your customer sees that, I can assure you that they are pretty much guaranteed to be turned off by your listing almost instantly. So when it comes to making spelling mistakes, like there is a certain standard that people will expect from your book. So if you're spelling your, so if you're spelling the things in your title wrong, then people will make an assumption of the overall quality of your book from just the spelling errors in your title and even in your description. And in some cases, you will find people that even have spelling errors on the front of their book cover, which is unbelievable at this point, but it definitely happens. And these are the people that don't make any money with Amazon because they're rushing their books out as fast as humanly possible. So I think this is mainly for people that are uploading a lot of books onto Amazon where their strategy is to go for extreme volume instead of quality. And when you're putting out books extremely fast, like you just don't have time to check through the small errors that you might be making on your listing. And like I say, you go into this kind of seller's mode where you don't really care what your buyer is actually going to be getting. Okay, so of course, I understand that a lot of people watching this might not be native English speakers and a lot of people that publish on Amazon aren't native English speakers. So some people's grasp of the English language is going to be slightly lesser than people that are native to the English language. So what I would suggest that these people do is after you've made a title or a description or anything like that for your book, just come across to somewhere like Grammarly, as we can see here come across to Grammarly and just copy and paste your whatever it is that you're not sure about. Just copy and paste it into Grammarly and you'll see if you're making any spelling errors for your books. Okay, so what is the next mistake that I think people are making with their books? And I think the next mistake is descriptions that look clumped and messy. So the next thing that people see after they come onto your listing is going to be your description. And for the most part, people like to sort of skim through your description and get more information about your book as quick as they can. And I don't know about you, but I don't spend all of my time reading every single word of the description. So when it comes to seeing descriptions like this, we don't know where to start. Our eyes don't know where to go particularly. So we end up just getting confused by mass amounts of information that is just plugged in front of us on the screen. And from a lot of people, this will just turn people off. They're not sure what they're getting. As we can see here, everything is blurred. It's blended into one. People don't have time to work this out in their heads. They don't want to work this out. They just want to see very clear, very precise what they're going to be getting. And they don't have to make too much effort to find out what that is. So when it comes to seeing descriptions like this, this is not necessarily done on purpose. I think what is happening here is that when it comes to creating the book in the Amazon account, people are typing out their description in their Amazon account the way they want to see it on screen. So that could include paragraphs and it could include spaces. And when they upload to Amazon, they think that it looks really good and they think that it looks clear. But of course, Amazon's description works through HTML. So no matter what you do, it's going to come out looking horrible and blocky just like this. So what we can do to counter this is to come over to somewhere like kindlepreneur.com and use their book description generator. So what you can do here is to type out your description the way that you want to see it on your Amazon listing. So don't do this in your Amazon account. Do this at Kindlepreneur and just type your description out here and don't make it too wordy. Include some bullet points, tell your buyer exactly what they're going to get. So you can start with something like a little opening. So I'm just going to go through this quickly with words are basically just going to be used for example's sake here. Um, but we're more so looking at how this is going to be laid out than what I'm actually writing here. So we can start with a nice little opening about what people are going to get. And what we can do and what I do for the most part with my books is to make this one bold. So you can just swipe it and then on Kindlepreneur, you can just come across to the font styles and click on bold. And then we have that in bold and that's going to turn out looking bold on our description on our listing. OK, so I've just quickly typed something out here. And again, you can ignore the actual words, but just more so focus on the layout that I'm going for here. So we're going to have something that we can write as our kind of description title, then a very brief introduction to what the book is going to be and then we can have sort of a included inside section here which i'm going to turn into bold as well and then what you can do is you can put something like next to each bullet point you can put like a it depends on your niche of course so if it's something for women perhaps you would put hearts or stars um something like this just to make it stand out okay so to me that looks much clearer than something like 
this here. And if I come onto Amazon and I see, if I was to see these two listings side by side, I'd be able to get information from this listing much quicker than this one here. So for this one, I have to kind of go looking for the information. Whereas this one, it's very clear. You can see straight away what you're gonna be getting inside the book, okay? So once you've done that, once you've typed it out the way that you want to see it on your Amazon listing on Kindlepreneur, you can just come down to generate my code here and click that. And then you can either swipe all of this code here. I know it looks a bit messy, but it's absolutely fine. It's just swipe the code or you can click copy code and then paste that into your description on your Amazon listing, okay? So don't type out your description straight into your Amazon listing description. Always come across to Kindlepreneur, type it out the way that you want here, then use the HTML code that it generates, and then it's gonna come out looking much nicer than this, okay? Okay, so moving on to the next mistake here, and unfortunately I'm gonna use the same author for this example as well. But the next mistake that people are making is they're not having their text centered properly on their book. So as we can see here, this is shifted all the way over to the right. Um, and again, it goes back to this sort of standard of quality that people associate with the entirety of your book when they see one mistake. So if they see a mistake like a text on the front of a cover not even being centered correctly when it evidently should be, like this is not done on purpose as a style, it is just done you know, it's done sloppy and it's done quickly and this person hasn't taken the time to just center the text correctly with their cover. Okay, so this is a slightly harder one to give a solution for because the way that you create cover might be different to how I create my cover. So when I'm creating my covers, I'm using Canva and it's really easy to see in Canva when something is centered and when something isn't centered correctly. So when you upload this book, let's say you've uploaded this cover and you can see it in your draft, in your Amazon account. When you scroll and you see the thumbnail in your Amazon account for this book, you'll be able to see that this isn't lined up properly because you're gonna get a little um, thumbnail on your Amazon listings. So inside your account, when you haven't published it yet, and even when you have published it, you'll see thumbnails of all of the books that you've created. So if you scroll through before you publish it, you'll be able to see a thumbnail like this in your account. And you'll be able, very quickly be able to see whether the text on the front is centered or not. And if it isn't, then you need to go back and redesign the cover. So when it comes to these mistakes, you can maybe get away with some of it sometimes, that like you can get away with one of these mistakes if you're in the correct niche. But when these mistakes add up, so like you have a cover that's not aligned correctly, you have the description that doesn't look good, and you have things that are going on in your title, a lot of people won't even get to the point where they look inside the book after they've seen these three things then they've already judged the quality of your book and then you've not made the sale from that person. Okay, so next mistake that I think people are making is creating confusing titles for their listings. So I think what a lot of people are still doing, and I think this is something that used to work much better than it does now, is to keyword stuff. So stuffing keywords into their title, hoping that they're gonna make more sales just because they have these keywords in their title. So for example, this book here, they've got quite a lot of keywords in there, even including the size of the pages, the number of pages, um, it's a birthday gift, it's for teenage girls, it's for boys, it's a gift, it's for cats, it's cat lovers, for eight year olds, birthdays, notebook, etc., etc. daughter, son. So there is all kind of just, this is a keyword orientated title in my opinion. So when you kind of create these titles that are keyword orientated, you end up making something that doesn't make sense. So Again, the order that we go for here is that the, the customer sees your cover, then they read your title. So they see the cover, they like the look of the cover, they come to your title to see what they're getting with your book, okay? And then when they come into your listing, they want the sales page, which is your description, to finally sell the book to them, okay? So the, script, uh, the, um, the title it needs to make sense in order for you to get to the next step of getting them to your description and then making your sale. So when it comes to having your titles, you need to get that balance that I've spoken about in other videos. You need to get the balance of having a title that tells your customer what they're getting, but also includes your most relevant keywords for your niche, okay? Okay, which will lead me straight on to the next mistake that I think people are making is trying to be too keyword orientated with everything that they do. And that's inclusive in the description. So like this person here, for example, 
they're trying to get a lot of keywords into their listing here, but they've taken it one step further and they've tried to pack a load of keywords into the description as well. As we can see, birthday notebook, uh, daughter, son, granddaughter, brother, niece, etc., 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 and it doesn't actually make sense. And it's to my understanding that Amazon doesn't index phrases from your description. So you're better off when it comes to your description to use it as a description and describe your product to your customer instead of trying to stuff it with keywords when uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think Amazon puts any relevance in terms of keywords from your description. Okay, so the next mistake that I think people are making, and this is more so for people that are producing low content books in high numbers, is they do this thing where they are very, very niche specific and they change something on the front cover ever so slightly like this person's doing here. So they're trying to target people that enjoy cats. So this is cat lovers who want notebooks and then they're gonna target the age on the front. And what people would do is they do this with things like professions as well. So so they'll take one concept, so take one niche so that like cats, for example, here, and then they'll start targeting either different age ranges like this person here is doing. So 14, 18, 17, 13, 11, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or they do something like try and target different professions like nurses, doctors, uh, astronauts, or anything like that. Um, unlikely astronauts, but I think you understand my point. And for me, like this is just way too specific. So how many books do you have to produce before you find someone that is interested in buying a cat notebook for a 14 year old like to me that seems like your audience is very very limited and honestly i don't think i've ever seen this strategy work where people are just banging out all these different age ranges or professions and then just hope that they get some sales uh, eventually so there are for this person's author page they have like 75 pages which means they have so 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 many books and i'd imagine not many of them are selling whatsoever and you think the amount of time that it takes to just upload these onto Amazon. It is such a long time. I always think, would you not be better trying to produce something in a niche that you've actually researched that you can see is making sales and to produce something that is not a line journal and to produce something that is of a higher quality and has a better cover, for example. So would you not be better off spending your time doing that? Or would you rather just keep throwing out stuff and then hope that some of it sticks eventually? So with KDP, that there is definitely an element of like trying to put out volume and getting lucky with some of your books making sales and that's just the way that it is it's a fact but not to this extent where you're not even targeting a niche where people are actually going to be buying your stuff so for example how many people are actually searching for a a cat notebook for 14 year olds and if we did our niche research method where we're gonna just type in the keyword phrase here so it would be cat notebook cat notebook for a 14 year old how many people if we did our niche research how many people are actually making sales like how much data are we going by that could then say to us yes this is a good niche for us to pursue so as you can see people are pushing out these um, cat notebooks for 14 year olds which very specific niche but as you can see here none of these are making any sales so as we scroll through here, I would see the ranking here because of the extension that I'm using. I'd see the ranking for these books and none of these books have any sales on them. So if you did your research for this type of book, you would see that there's no real traffic going to it. So why are you wasting time putting these books onto Amazon? And the same thing here for Cat Notebook for an 18 year old. There are just loads of them, but none of them are making any sales pretty much at all. And I'm not sure if this is something that has worked in the past. That's why there's so many of these types of books. But I really don't think it's the way forward with Amazon. Like There just must be so many of these blank or line journals that are just way too niche specific that are up on Amazon not making any sales. And honestly, like even if someone bought one of these here, there's no reason for them to go back and buy another one. Like It's too specific. Like They're not going to come back in a year's time and buy the same book. It doesn't make any sense to me. And just think, how many books do you need to have on Amazon in order to make this method work? Do you have to have a hundred? Way more than that, I can promise you. You probably need six, seven, eight thousand of these type of books to make any real kind of money from this. And if you have that amount of books on your account, I think you run the real risk of having your account terminated at some point just because you have so much rubbish out on Amazon. You can't offer that much quality to your customer if you have that many books. 
And like I say, I do believe to some extent that you do need volume. And I'm talking toward like maybe four to 500 books. Well, maybe even less than that, two to 400 books if you're doing things right, if you're doing a low content route. Okay, so that's the next mistake is being too niche specific to the point where you're not actually targeting anyone at all. So you always need to be using Amazon's data that they're showing you. Be sure that there's traffic going to your niche and then publish around that data. Okay, so I'm gonna make this next point very quick um, just because I don't wanna drag this video on too long and get boring for you. But the next thing I think, the next mistake that I think people are making is trying to fit in and trying to fit in in niches where you need to have good covers when you are not a good designer. So as I've said many times on this channel, I'm not a particularly good designer. I use cheap or free tools such as Canva. Um, so if I was trying to compete in a marketplace where if I was trying to compete in a niche where there was no interior for the book, if it was just a lined journal like this one here, what is the only real way that you can stand out amongst the thousands and thousands and thousands of other line journals? What's the only way that you can stand out? The only way really is to have your cover stand out. So for these, you need to have, in my opinion, an extremely good cover, which means you need to be good at designing. So for example, this book here, I'm not saying it's a bad cover. This is something that I could make. This is the quality that I could produce. Um, but it's nothing special. There's nothing that really stands out about this cover that's different to anyone else's composition notebooks. And people have been producing this type of book for many, many years now. So this was uploaded in 2020, just a few months ago. So there's no chance this person's going to make any real sales from this book because they're just putting in a normal design into a market that's flooded with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really good designs. So if you can't produce a high quality cover or a really unique cover with a unique idea on it, then I wouldn't even bother trying to do these blank or lined journals. Okay, so I'm going to wrap this video up very soon, but there's just one more mistake that I think people are making. And this is more of a mindset mistake than something that people are actually actively doing when it comes to creating their listings. But that is just blaming other people for them not making sales. So to put this into perspective for you, Amazon is... I think everyone knows Amazon is the biggest seller's marketplace on the internet. And there is so much money going through Amazon. There are so many people buying stuff off Amazon. I'd be amazed if anyone was watching this video and they haven't bought something off of Amazon. So if you aren't finding a way to make money from publishing books on Amazon, then you are the problem. That is the harsh reality is that you are the problem when it comes to not making any sales. Like you might have been given some bad information, but if you've been given bad information, it doesn't mean that selling on Amazon doesn't work. It doesn't mean that it's a scam. It doesn't mean that anyone's trying to profit from you not having success on Amazon either. And for the most part, if you aren't making sales, it's probably because you're in the wrong niche and you're uploading terrible listings and you're making a lot of, if not all of the mistakes that you've seen in this video. Okay, so it's time to stop blaming people and to start working and start learning and start producing good books in good niches that actually have money going to them. The Amazon marketplace isn't saturated for the most part for people that are willing to think slightly outside of the box, people that are willing to do their niche research for more than five minutes, people that are willing to make designs that aren't absolutely terrible, people that are willing to actually think about what they're uploading onto Amazon. This marketplace is never gonna be saturated for this type of person. So people with low effort, low quality, yes, the marketplace is saturated and you won't make money, but for the most part, we're good to go with Amazon. There is always going to be new niches, new customers, new methods of pushing, pushing traffic to your listing, i.e. sending ads, for example, as you've seen at the start of this video, there's always gonna be a way to do it. Okay, so that's the end of the video. I hope that I haven't sounded too ranty at the end of the video and put anyone off from pursuing their publishing. But I think a lot of people do need a reality check when it comes to them not actually making sales on Amazon. Just know that you can do it. You keep going, you will make those sales. And of course, you will make money eventually. Okay, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe. See you later.